Welcome to my channel. My name is Priska, and if you enjoy cultivating your personal style, then you're going to love it here. This video on fashion trends will help you modernize your outfits in a way that's aligned with the present version of yourself. So if you've been feeling stuck in the past, 2020, 2015, 2010, and you're ready to learn how to update your looks in a sophisticated way, then you're in the right place. In this video, we'll cover firstly, the high points of this season's trends, the myriad of trending aesthetics, runway style versus street style, and lastly, how to actually update your outfits in a way that's simple, easy, and very, very you. So if that sounds exciting to you, then let's begin. Oh, before we do, we have pages and pages of research. We have a new microphone. Who gave that girl a microphone? I did. And for my subscribers, we have a flower budget. To start this report, I wanted to give you a one pager on the high points of what's trending in spring and summer fashion this year. So the trending color is still red, but a darker shade of red. We're talking about burgundy, maroon, or if you're really fancy, Bordeaux. But then again, I still think that you should just wear whatever color red you enjoy wearing. Just know that it is like a really great way to add a pop of color and life to your outfit. The next high point is that the trending detail is sculptural florals, and those have been so beautiful to watch traipsing up and down the runway. I would love to have this piece from Valentino, but since that's not in this year's budget, I'm going to stick to wearing my floral pieces in a more updated way, which I'll show you in the last section of this video. And finally, the trending outfit type is, well, it's hard to say. It's pretty much whatever matches your lifestyle. The difference this time is that people are really leaning into their niche style aesthetic, whether that's business suits, jeans and sneakers, frilly dresses with feminine details. Pretty much this year, every style is trending, but it's like specific pieces within each style. So we're seeing a lot of the younger generation wearing the wide leg jeans with Adidas Sambas and like a Lueve tank. And if you have more feminine style, it's not just frilly dresses, but it's like full cottagecore fairy garden maiden style, complete with wispy bangs and a diagnosable plant growing habit. The point is go big or go home. And I personally really like that. I'll give you the most popular pieces in each category, but this is going to be sort of like watching a short one minute video and expecting to have the full picture. It's not going to give you the full picture. It'll just give you a little tease if that's all you can handle right now. But if you want the full picture, watch the entire video. The most popular top this season is a sheer tank. Now keep in mind, runway trends aren't built for us everyday gals. So how can we kind of morph this into something that works for your real life? I'm planning on finding a crochet tank that has a lining. So it's still appropriate for my regular life, but it has that ode to a spring freshness that we're seeing this year. For most popular bottoms, I couldn't pick just one piece because there's such a divergence between casual wear and dressy wear. For casual wear, we have jeans in a low rise wide leg and soft wash. For dressy, we have high rise black crepe straight leg pants. In the dresses category, there is one dress that I saw on every single runway I watched, and that was the crisp white dress. Now every designer had their signature take on it, but I saw it all across the board. The most popular bag style I'm seeing right now is a shoulder bag with a dark brown leather. Something like an espresso or even a black leather with a crocodile print has been really popular. The second most popular bag style right now is the Roe Margot. And if you don't know the Roe, that is actually Mary Kate and Ashley's brand. They started that after they quit acting and it is the it brand for the New York fashion aware businesswoman. The most popular shoe right now are mesh ballet flats, but I think any variant of ballet flats are pretty popular right now. So if you've been waiting for a decade for this trend to come back, you're welcome. And for accessories right now, we're really seeing a lot of designer sunglasses as part of like a signature look. The ugliest popular ones to me are the Lueve sunnies. <sighs> but the most stylish, probably long lasting style are the Celine Triumph sunglasses. 
Now that you have the high points, it gives you sort of the skeleton of where fashion is headed this year. But if you're thinking, I still don't know how to update my outfits, then don't worry, I've got you, keep watching. Remember how I told you everything is trending? It's true. There are 12 trending aesthetics I wanna tell you about, and you're going to see in stores that a lot of different designers and retailers are leaning into these little niche aesthetics, but I think they're kind of fun. So the first one is a holdover from last year, everyone's favorite quiet luxury. This includes elevated basics, classic styles, and bags more expensive than a car. <laughs> Who doesn't love that? The second is an update to Tomato Girl Summer, which is so last year. Now we have the evolved version of Strawberry Girl, including painted on freckles, pink rosy cheeks, and sweet innocent poses. Now the younger generation thinks that Hailey Bieber invented this, but I think she owes some royalties to the original Strawberry Girl. Next we have Cottage Core. Linen dresses, puff sleeves, and milkmaid braids. I think this is painting some kind of a picture how people want a return to a more simple life, one where you just picked flowers in the forest and everything else in life just kind of faded away. A similar super sweet trend is ballet core. This includes lace, ruffles, bows, and ballet flats. And we have seen each of these things all over the spring and summer runways this year. This is a trend you're going to see everywhere, but I think there are ways to subtly incorporate this trend in a more elevated and sophisticated way. Next, we have the clean girl aesthetic. It's no makeup, at least no eye makeup, which is really the no makeup makeup look that actually relies on makeup. This is paired with monotone neutral outfits in cozy textures. If you're thinking, why is everything so girly? Well, apparently the internet has been wondering the same thing. According to a big data analyst, data but make it fashion, the clean girl aesthetic is fading to make way for the mob wife look. Black nails and black outfits to match your cold demeanor. Next, if you will remember Coastal Grandma from last year, which I don't think should be a trend. I think that should be ongoing for all Coastal Grandmas. But this year it has been updated to Eclectic Grandpa. Sweater vests, dad hats, and Birkenstocks. The youths, I tell you, the youths. Then we have Varsity Prep, which is a sportier style of prepster Preppy has been a trend since forever, but now we're looking at the tennis skirts, anything you'd wear to a Hamptons country club. And if you've never been, don't worry, neither have any of these TikTokers. The next three aesthetics are specific decades dressing. The first one is bring back the 80s. We have oversized blazers from Balmain and Saint Laurent. Now the pro to this look is that larger shoulders make your body look smaller. The con is that if you go too large, you could look like a child. The next trendy decade style is a throwback to the 90s. And if you're offended that the 90s are a throwback, I am too. We have low rise jeans, micro skirts, moto jackets, and pin straight hair. Next we have Y2K. Denim skirts, baby doll tees, and hairstyles we pray stay in the grave. With all these trending aesthetics, you might be wondering, why are trends so short-lived now? It used to be you could buy something and wear it for a few years without being outdated. And that's because the designer gods used to dictate what was cool to wear. but now it's teenagers on Instagram and TikTok that are telling us what's in fashion. And you remember being that age, you reinvented yourself every few months. So of course these trends are going to come in and out like the seasons. I don't wanna be all negative about this, just recognize it is what it is. There are pros and cons to everything. For those of us with a passion for fashion, it is an exciting time for change. For those of us who want to update our outdated styles, well, there are a billion options to choose from now, literally from retailers to styles to clothes. 
And for those of you who care nothing about fashion, you're not even watching this video, so God bless. The point is fashion is never slowing back down to the way you're used to, so just keep in mind that all these trends are going to come and go and don't get lost in the shuffle. If you're new to my channel, consider subscribing because I've really placed a focus on personal style, actually re-wearing your clothes and mixing up in a way that is modern, updated and feels very aligned with who you are. My right arm was getting an unbelievable workout from that microphone, so hopefully this sound is good. So I watched over 30 runway shows, which included over 500 outfits, and I deleted everything that to me was just absolutely preposterous. And trust me when I say there was a cacophony of luxury garbage that I wish I could erase from my brain. What remains is the beautiful fashion that you can incorporate to update your outfits this year. The top designers did their best on updating their main staples. You won't be shocked to know that Chanel showed tweed, Versace showed mini skirts, and Tom Ford showed sexy suiting. But the most evolved to me was Tori Burch. I don't think she gets enough credit as a runway designer. Her space age theme with crinoline rings and bubble hems was not only inventive, but I could actually wear those clothes. So in talking about runway trends, I have it categorized as the trending colors, tops, bottoms and dresses, shoes, handbags and accessories. Let's start with colors. Pop quiz, what is the trending color this year? It is a shade of red. Of course, cherry red was the trendy color last year, so hopefully you'll still be seeing that in stores if you like that color, but you're also going to see darker shades of red, even for spring, which I think is kind of surprising, but honestly, I dig it. I live in Florida, and sometimes all of the white and pastel colors can feel a little bit juvenile, but when you ground it with darker accessories, it becomes much more elevated and sophisticated. Besides red, we're also seeing really bold colors like cobalt blue, chocolate brown, canary yellow, and magenta. Yes, still Viva Magenta. For those of you expecting the two punch hit of the 2023 Pantone Color of the Year and the Barbie premiere to have faded away by now, well, it's not happening. The fact is that Barbie brought in a billion dollars of revenue and that number does not fade very quickly. But the 2024 Pantone Color of the Year is peach fuzz, which <laughs> I'm not so fond about. I don't think it goes well with my skin tone. It doesn't go well with a lot of people's skin tones actually, but of course Pantone is not a fashion brand. They're a design brand. So sometimes it works in fashion and sometimes it doesn't. Speaking of skin tone, the next trending set of colors are neons and pastels. I mean, both of these sets are on designer runways right now, and I think you can definitely see which ones bring out certain skin tones. If you have a lighter complexion, lighter hair, then pastels are generally going to work best for you. But if you're like me with tan skin and darker hair, then neons are going to complement you a little bit better. Next, we have liquid metallics. I'm still not sure if this is exclusive to formal dressing, but we'll see if this takes off in the casual wear or street style world as well. Another very trending color, I should say combination this runway season is black and white. In the past, it's been all about tonal looks and tonal is still very much happening. It helps to elongate the body and make an outfit look cohesive automatically. But now we're seeing color blocking with black and white, which looks so classic and I'm sure it'll never be truly out of style. Now I can't talk about colors without talking about a very prevalent pattern this season. Cheetah is back, baby. It definitely looks more modern and updated now, so if you've been holding on to your old cheetah pieces from 10 or 15 years ago, then just try styling them in a more updated way and see what new outfits you can create with your older pieces. Other trending patterns include polka dots, swirly prints, and plaid. 
Now just a note on plaid, I personally don't like wearing plaid because I have a curvy figure, I typically wear my hair wavy, I have round facial features, and I find the plaid feels a little bit harsh with those intersecting lines. So instead I like a more organic pattern similar to what I'm wearing today. And speaking of, maximalist prints and patterns are still going strong. I love to see these new outfits that designers are putting together. On most of the designer runways, we're seeing the same trends. Sheer is the trend of the season. I can't figure out like what they expect us to do with this. I mean, for me, I'm not going to walk around on the streets in the grocery store with a sheer top on. But maybe we can get some other inspiration from this and find a way to make it our own. The next detail is draping. I love the way that draping creates highlights and shadows and that contrast can really bring a lot of drama into a simple solid colored piece of fabric. The third detail I've already mentioned is sculptural volume, especially 3D flowers. It seems that some designers took the floral trend as a direct challenge to their abilities. Another detail that's pretty popular is fringe. So this is one that is definitely signature to certain aesthetics, the Western aesthetic, the boho aesthetic. I think fringe has been very popular, especially with Ralph Lauren, and it's so flirty and fun. The last detail I wanna mention is what I'm gonna call irony, or mixing different styles to create a very signature look. Now these styles are typically reflective of your lifestyle. So if you're going to a business meeting during the day and then playing tennis afterwards, how do you mesh those styles? This is a graduate level of addressing and I haven't figured that one out yet. I tend to silo myself into whatever activity I'm doing for that moment and that's the outfit I wear, but we'll see if it trickles down to the mainstream with mixing styles. On the runway, the white sundress is big for spring and summer. There's so many styles available with all these intricate details that really speak to the soul of the designer. And that makes it so much more fun when you're shopping to have these details that spark your interest and see how you can play with those styles. The other type of dress we're seeing a lot of is open embroidery. Really any kind of openness, like sheer, crochet, open embroidery, it's all highly fashionable right now. For tops, we're seeing a delicate blend of structured and feminine. For example, a crisp collared button down with floral applique details, or a fitted blouse with ruffles, or a menswear inspired vest with a feminine flattering cut. Moving on to bottoms, this is an area that I think you can definitely tell a millennial, and I'm a millennial, so I'm stepping on my own toes, but you can definitely tell a millennial because typically their pants are like a little bit too tight. We grew up in the era where it was skinny jeans or die. And then in 2020, it became the baggiest pants you've ever seen or die. Well, now we've corrected each of those extremes and it seems like the trending bottoms all have an appropriate sized volume. They're tailored, but not uber tight. Fitted, but you can still walk in it. And when it comes to the high rise or low rise or mid rise, we're seeing all of it. Everything is trending. What matters is that it flatters your body, your current body, not the body you had in high school, but today, what flatters you the most? I think personally flattering clothing pieces are always going to be in style. I never recommend decluttering those. So have an honest assessment in the mirror and you'll find the clothes that flatter you the most. Another category of clothing, which I'm very excited about and I'm wearing today are sets. <laughs> Pieces that were clearly designed to complement each other as opposed to tonal dressing, which you pair together yourself. This is to me the easiest way to wear a top and bottom. It comes together as a set. <laughs> so with business wear, obviously there are suits but there's also denim on denim outfits, which have been trending and will continue to be. It's basically a vintage look turned classic. And we have the resort wear two piece outfit, which is a top and a bottom in the same print or a complementary print. It's been really fun to see how designers have been mixing this up and it still looks very cohesive.
Now we can't talk about trends without talking about shoes, bags, and accessories. With shoes, we're seeing a lot of the ballet flats and the mesh style is very in, which I think would really actually work for me because the reason I don't wear ballet flats is because I live in a humid climate and um, yeah, there's not a lot of breathability in like leather ballet flats, but mesh might work for me. So I plan on trying this on when I'm in store. but I saw what might be the ugliest shoes I've ever seen before, toe cleavage ballet flats. I don't even know if that's what they're called, but I can't get that image out of my head and I'm sorry for sharing that with you. Now, every year I like to talk about the trending sneakers because this is such a practical piece for so many of us. This year we're seeing a lot of the retro track sneakers, which I think are a super fun little way of paying homage to the past. They're available in a ton of different colors. A lot of different designers are doing them. With dressy shoes, we're seeing a lot more kitten heels, which I'm not so thrilled about because for some reason, kitten heels are harder for me to walk in than like a one to two inch low heel. It's like I always want to twist my ankle when I'm walking in them. But fashion did not ask me, so I'm just here to report the facts. There are three main styles of trending bags that you should be aware of. The first one is the shoulder bag. So I just got one of these last year and I wore it all throughout the fall. This is a bag by Tory Burch that has a fill coop or cut thread detail that makes it look a little bit velvety and it has her logo medallion print on it. I think I've worn this bag almost every day for over six months. It is such a practical piece for me and works with so many of my outfits, adding that needed pop of pattern. So that is one I would highly recommend. Another trending bag style is the work tote, which of course is practical for some. I work from home, so I don't really need a work tote, although I do have one. The oversized tote is so hot on the runway, but the consumer test has determined that this is a lie. They do not want the oversized tote. They want a tote that is right sized, fits your laptop, maybe a water bottle, but it's not the size of a suitcase. So while you'll see designer brands offering the giant sized work totes, make sure if you're purchasing one that you choose one that is right sized for your lifestyle. And lastly, for dressy occasions, clutches are always going to be in style. The ones that I'm seeing now that I think are most intriguing to me are the ones that are convertible. They come with a shoulder strap and a crossbody strap. So you have multiple ways to wear them. Now I'm curious, what makes the most sense for your lifestyle? Is it a shoulder bag, a work tote, a multi-use clutch? Let me know down in the comments which one works best for you. In the last category of runway trends, we have accessories. Major news alert, big statement accessories are in. Large belt buckles, bangles, brooches, sunglasses, statement earrings and necklaces, but not the statement earrings that we wore in 2010 that were like neon color beaded and looked really cheap and tacky. Instead, these statement earrings and necklaces are in silver and gold. They look prominent and expensive. So my point in saying that isn't to say you should be spending a ton of money on statement jewelry that you can't wear that often. Instead, I recommend buying the highest quality you can get in a size that's appropriate for most of your everyday outfits. And that's how you take fashion and translate it into your personal style in a way that's really aligned with who you are. Speaking of, it's time for my favorite part of this video, how to actually update your outfits. We've learned a lot throughout this video about what's trending in both runway style and street style, but this is the most important part. I'm calling this section, they've lost their minds, but you don't have to. There are three key ways that's going to make it easy to update your outfits. The first one is to choose a pop of color and focus on using it once or twice in your outfit. So if you're into red or burgundy, or you want a bolder color like magenta, cobalt blue, or lime green, or even a signature color like chocolate brown. The easiest way to incorporate that color isn't even in clothing, it's actually with makeup. 
lipstick and nail colors like I have here. I've got a magenta nail color and a pink lipstick. That's an easy way to update your outfits for spring. But specifically with clothing, the second easiest way to update your outfits is with a handbag, shoes, or some accessories like a scarf or sunglasses. Instead of choosing just white or black, like maybe that is your default, instead choose a color that is a pop of color and focus on wearing that in a handbag, shoes, or accessories, and that will help you update most of your outfits without reinventing the wheel every day. The second update you can make is with shopping. Make sure you're only purchasing items that you're actually going to wear. So instead of a sheer top, maybe try a lined crochet tank. Or if you're into the white dress of the season, then choose one in a style that's practical for consistent wearing. As you're going shopping and trying on pieces, instead of asking, is this trendy? Ask yourself, is this personally flattering? Typically, if it's available at a retailer, then it's trendy enough. You can also use Pinterest to find an aesthetic that really excites you and identify key clothing pieces that really make that aesthetic and align to your actual lifestyle. So whether that's a different type of footwear or shorts or a change in your dress hem length, only buy the clothes that complement your style, your body, and your lifestyle. And the third tip I have for updating your outfits is to remix your old clothes for new outfits. Try a tonal outfit like blue on blue or red on red, or restyle your floral pieces with an edgier twist. I'm doing that this year by adding darker brown accessories to my light spring dresses, and I think that's going to create more of a grounding effect. It's going to make it look more mature and sophisticated. You don't have to rely on shopping in new trends to create new outfits. You can find what you're looking for in your closet already if you think outside the box of what you've worn before. Remix those old clothes and find new ways of wearing them. Thanks for watching my spring trends report. I hope it has been thoroughly enjoyable for you. And if it has, then this is the video I would recommend you watch next. If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. I have a new video out every week. I'll see you next week with a brand new one. Until then, take care.